Madam President, I rise today to discuss yet another of the consequences of President Biden's policies. And that is and are the prices are going up, the price hikes. Families in West Virginia and across our nation are struggling because of the policies and priorities that the, these past two years have made essential items and good seemingly unattainable. Whether it's gas, goods or services, energy prices, utility costs, small business expenses, owning a home, or simply affording to put food on the table, American families are squeezed at every turn. According to the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, prices have risen 13.7% since President Biden took office. A recent report from the Heritage Foundation found that because of that staggering rise, the average American family has $7,400 less in their pocket at the end of the year. This is a timely topic today because the Federal Reserve has just announced the eighth consecutive inter interest rate hike they have had to deploy in order to curb this administration's two-year spending spree, which is fueling high inflation, our high inflation economy. But an interest rate hike once reserved as a measure that sends a direct signal to policymakers, is just another Wednesday in this president's America. Chairman Powell warned last August that the continued interest rate increases and inflationary pressures would bring, quote, pain to households and businesses. And boy, does that ring true today. Meanwhile, President Biden continues to laud small inflation changes and slow economic growth but he refuses to recognize his administration's role in the record high prices that the American middle class are continuing to have to face. On the further economic fallout Americans are likely to face, projected by many economists later this year from interest rate hikes in the past year. So let's just dive into this a little bit. Whether it's a conversation with Senate colleagues, waiting in line at a store, or a constituent calling my office, the cost of food remains a central topic of concern all across this nation. According to the most recent reports from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the cost of groceries went up 11.8% from the year prior. You hear about it with meat and eggs and bread and butter, all the essentials. To add to this, the cost of restaurant purchases is up 8.4%. In fact, the price of every food category has continued to grow at a faster rate than their historic ad, uh, historical averages. Good evening, friends. Happy January 5th to all of you. Well, friends, lawmakers are working together to help millions of Americans that receive Social Security benefits and new payments will be going out to eligible seniors in just three days. President Biden has confirmed new ideas to address Social Security's insolvency, and Republican lawmakers have also shared their plan as well. My dear friends, please do me a big favor and watch until the end of this video to hear about all of these details. Also, if you would like to enter this coming Friday's Walmart gift card giveaway of $75, Please make sure, friends, that you click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, the greater your chances, friends, of winning the giveaways. The Social Security Administration's first round of retirement payments for the month of February, which is worth up to $4,194, will begin being issued to recipients in just three days. The retirement benefits from the SSA are issued to recipients in waves of three, with payments beginning on the second Wednesday of the month. The first payment is scheduled for February 8th and will be for recipients who were born between the first and the 10th of a month. Nearly all American workers are eligible for Social Security benefits, and people can choose to start collecting their monthly checks at any time between the ages of 62 and 70 years old. Full retirement age is currently set at 67 years old for workers born in 1960 or later. 
But nearly 90% of eligible Americans claim Social Security at or before their full retirement age, with about a third of beneficiaries claiming them at age 62. But if you are one of the few who can hold out and start claiming at a later date, it could have a significant impact on your financial life after retirement. According to many economists and lawmakers, Social Security is careening towards insolvency. The only question up for debate is when will it happen? The federal program's trustees stated in their latest update that Social Security's combined trust funds would run out of money in the year 2035. However, less than two months ago, the Congressional Budget Office projected that Social Security will become insolvent in only 10 years. Contrary to some Americans' fears, Social Security benefits won't be cut off when the trust funds are exhausted. Payroll taxes at current levels should enable the program to continue paying about 80% of scheduled benefits. But still, those steep benefit cuts will hurt millions of retirees. So politicians in both major political parties want to prevent this scenario from even happening. President Biden has put forward a new plan to preserve Social Security benefits. The most important part of his proposal is to tax the rich to prevent Social Security's insolvency. In particular, Biden wants to make more wages subject to the Social Security payroll tax. Because currently, Americans pay this payroll tax only on income up to $160,200. Under Biden's campaign plan, any income above $400,000 per year would also be taxed. One key downside to Biden's proposal is that it won't be enough to fix Social Security by itself. The Urban Institute's 2020 analysis of the Biden campaign plan found that increasing the payroll tax cap would only reduce Social Security's long-term deficit by around 25%, and it would push back the program's insolvency by only five years. Another program relates to additional Social Security changes that President Biden would like to make. He campaigned on increasing some benefits as well as changing the way the annual cost of living adjustments are made. These proposals would greatly reduce the positive impact on preserving Social Security that increasing the payroll tax cap would achieve. Some individual Republican senators want to allow Congress to reauthorize Social Security either on an annual basis or every five years. Such a change would give Congress the ability to adjust Social Security spending as needed. However, this idea has not gained much traction among other GOP politicians. But there are some proposals to preserve Social Security that have gained broader GOP support. The Republican Study Committee includes 165 members of the U.S. House of Representatives. The committee's proposed 2023 budget features several ideas to keep Social Security from going insolvent. The committee's proposal has the same limitation as President Biden's plan. It will not be enough by itself. An analysis conducted in 2022 by the Committee for a Responsible Budget found that increasing the full retirement age to 69 would address roughly one-third of Social Security's solvency gap. So clearly, President Biden and the GOP have different approaches to keeping Social Security from reaching insolvency. Perhaps the best alternative is for Democrats and Republicans to meet in the middle. Well, my amazing and most beautiful friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this February 5th. Thank you so much, friends, for being part of this community and for joining me here every day. To say thank you to all of you, I will be announcing two winners this coming Friday for a $75 Walmart gift card. If you would like to enter the giveaways, please make sure, friends, that you are subscribed to my channel, click and like several of my videos, and then do comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. My dear friends, the more videos that you watch and then leave a comment on, the greater your chances of winning the weekly giveaways. 